just lift those hands up and just give them glory, give them praise wherever you may be. Uh, see, the more we focus on our situation, the bigger it is. But we need to let our situation know that our God is bigger than it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you take the G out of the giant, you got in. And that's what we need to do with our situation. Hallelujah. We need to let our situation know that our God is awesome, that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Hallelujah. Wherever you are right now in this world, we need to give God praise. Just give him glory. Just worship him. Just love on him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for being so wonderful, for being awesome, God. For being our mountain moving. Oh God, don't destroy God. We just want to say thank you. Thank you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you, Lord, for being so good, God. Father, we just ask right now that you would stretch out your mighty hands, oh God, that you would touch, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever in the world the need may be, God, we ask right now that you supply it, Father God. Some battle with diabetes, oh God. Some are battle with cancer, oh God. Some battle with COVID-19, oh God. But Father, we know that you are Jehovah Rapha. Oh God, you are our healer, oh God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider, oh God. Oh God, you are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner. And Father, we know that there's nothing too hard for you, oh God. So Father, we ask that you would stretch out your hands right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Look on that man, that woman, that boy or girl, oh God. Oh God, that's down in their despair, oh God. That's down in in their troubles, oh God. We ask right now that you will stretch out your mighty hand, God. Lift them up right now, Father God. Let them know that the sun is going to shine again, oh God. Help them to know, Father, that you are right there, God. And Father, that you are yet able to carry them through, oh God. God, help them to know, God, that you still move mountains, oh God. There is nothing too hard for you, oh God. Have your way right now, Father God. Oh God. Now, there's nothing too hard for you, oh God. Nothing too hard for you, oh God. You move mountains, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Yes, God. You move Feel mountains, oh God. Feel it right now, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Do it right now, Father. Thank you, God. In the name of Thank Jesus. You, God. Have your way right now, Father. Hallelujah. Have your way right now, God. Break those chains right now, Father God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Remove the shackles, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, God. You are our glory, God, and you're the lifter of our head, oh God. Have your way right now, Father God. Have your way, Masters. And we thank you for being so good, oh God. And we just want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies, God. We thank you. We thank you, Father. And we count it all done, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On behalf of the Ivory Hill Baptist Church, I want to say first off, happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. I pray that you enjoy your day. We will now recognize our Golden guys. First one on our list is Brother Willie Evans. Next is Joe Ed Hedgepeth. Next is Ochi Osi Hedgepeth. Next one on the list is Noah Lee. Then have James Lynch Sr. We then have Sidney Macon. Thank God for Brother Otis McGee. We thank God for Brother Dennis C. Richardson. We give God the praise for Sam Richardson. Truly blessed to have Brother Thurman Richardson. We would like to add to one of our patriarchs, Brother Jesse Rudd, Brother Arthur Shields, Brother James Wiggins, Brother Alan Williams, and Brother Garfield Williams. We thank God for again our golden God. Father God, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you, God, 
for your excellent greatness. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness. Father, we ask you right now that you will touch my mind, heart, and soul. Give me the words to say, even in such a time as this. God, we thank you, Lord, for what's been done and said thus far. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. All of God's children say amen. We thank God for this and another opportunity to preach the word of God. We thank God for a portion of our praise team for giving us the selections on today. Another day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. We thank God for also our golden guys, amen, what they are doing for our community and our church. You will turn with me to the book of Job, Job chapter number one. Job chapter number one, starting at verse one. We're going to go down to verse five. <clears throat> Job chapter 1, starting at verse 1, going down to verse 5. And I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Job chapter 1, starting at verse 1. The King James Version says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God, and he eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred she asses, and a great, very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. <clears throat> and it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and often burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. I, I want to talk just for a few moments on the subject of the makeup of a loving father. The makeup of a loving father. Again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. In this day and time, it is difficult to find a father that will care truly for their children. It seemingly is that the father has left the building. They have vacated what God has brought them in this world to do. A father who is the one that has given the example, or should have been given the example of what a man is supposed to be. The definition of a father as a noun is a man in relation to his child or children. Another uh, definition of a father is often known as a priest. Another definition as a noun is, also, is known also as an earthly Christian theologian whose writings are regarded as especially authoritative. On the other hand, a dad, definition of a dad, couldn't find it in the regular dictionary, so I had to go to the urban dictionary where a dad is known as one's father, a male parent, a birth father, biological father, a stepfather, an old man. We oftentimes hear the definition of a father to be someone that is the male factor in the birth of a child. 
And a dad is one that fits the mold and will even stop or step into a child's life if their father is absent. Some fathers get a bad rap as, as well as some mothers, but what I want to do is not only look at what is done for the child as a father or dad, but also look at the relationship that the father and dad has with God and the children or their child. Job in the text is a man that we know had many difficulties in life. As he was doing the work of God, it was known as one of God's own heart. We know that he had many possessions as mentioned in chapter one. We also know that God allowed Job to be attacked by the enemy in his life with a serious illness, loss of children, and loss of his animals. We know that he was put on a trial, if you will, by his friends, being that they were accusing him of being guilty of doing something wrong because of the problems and the attacks on his life. But I don't want you want to look at a time in Job's life that we at times overlook. I want to look today at a time we overlook, at times that is actually setting up a portion of the story line as it describes the fatherly relationship with his children. If we look at a loving father and some of the characteristics of a loving father or the makeup of a loving father as it pertains to Job's life, we must first understand that a loving father, number one, lives for God to keep his name good. Verse 1 gives us that, that description as it says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. We must understand that Job was from a land named Uz. We are not only not really certain of the location of Uz, however, we do know that Uz had plenty of pastures and crops. We know that it was near a desert and it was close enough to the Sabians and Chaldeans to be raided. Most scholars believe that Uz was located east of the Jordan River near Canaan, where the Jews lived. In verse 1, not only does it tell us where Job lived, watch this, but it also gives us some characteristics of Job. It says that Job was a perfect and upright man and one that feared God and assured evil. The, the NIV says it, that, that Job was blameless and upright. Now we got to understand that even in this world that we live in now, that we live in a fallen world where good behavior is not always rewarded and bad behavior is not always punished. We, we can look at a man of color who is not doing anything or doesn't warrant that is giving on him and see them killed, but at the same time, see a man not of color walk into a church building and kill nine people, and then the people of authority put him in cuffs, and they did take him to Burger King, where he must have wanted something to eat. This is not fair. Job is a man who is doing right, but we know the story. Eventually, he goes through hell and high water because God allowed it to happen. What do you do when you're doing everything you're supposed to do? What do you do when all the things that you're supposed to be doing, you're treating folk right, you're, you're doing all the right things, but yet God allows some calamity to come into your life. What, what do you do when, when, when you're trying to love your family, but all your family hates you? What, what, what do you do when you're trying to do things for the people in the church and all the people in the church want to try to vote you out or get you out of your position? What, what do you do when you're trying to love your spouse and your spouse is trying to take advantage of you and tell you you ought to just curse God and die? Sin has twisted and messed it up justice to the point that even those that are innocent can look guilty by their skin color or even by the uniform their way they wear. The book and story shows us the life and legacy of a good man who was a loving father who lived for God in spite of the situations that he was in. 
The description of his life was one that loved God, lived for God, didn't do all the right things, but was one that God loved. Let me say that one more time. The description of this life was as one that loved God, lived for God. He didn't die every eye, no cross every T, but was one that God still loved. Let me place that in somebody's lap right now when you think that everybody's trying to hold things against you and trying to tell you that you ain't going to amount to nothing. I'm here to let you know that God still loves you. I know the going gets tough and the going gets rough and I know things might be rough in your life but I'm here to remind you on this Father Day Father that even if they call you just like and say you act just like your daddy that don't mean that God don't love you. The question that I have for us fathers on today is what is said about you? You might not get it all right all the time but are you but, but you're not as bad as you should be. Let me say that one more time. You, you, you might not do it all the right way, but you could be worse. And, and, and you might know some men or some fathers, if you will, that say they're taking care of their children, but they really ain't. They ain't spending no time. They ain't taking the time to go on trips with them. But yet, you get the bad rap because you are a man just like they are. Lives for God to keep his name good. And all you want to do is go to work and come home. All you want to do is be there for your babies and come home. All you want to do is go to church and come home. But yet you always get brought down because the struggle is real, especially in our culture. Oh, it lives for God to keep his name good. And the thing that I found out, my sisters and brothers, is even when you're trying to do good, evil's always showing up. There's always something that, that the enemy is going to try to do to me to, to take over your life. But I'm here to let you know that when you got God on your side, then there's no heaven or hell that anybody else can put you in. When you got God on your side, then, then everything else can go by the wayside because my God is good. The makeup of a loving father, number one, is it lives for God to keep his name good. But the second thing we got to understand about the making of a loving father is he works hard to provide for those in his care. Uh, uh, I'm getting ready to get some people mad with me because I'm getting ready to say something that folk don't like. If you got a man that's sitting in the house and you woman are going to work all the time, you need to make sure you find you somebody else. Amen, somebody. The text says that Job owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. It then says that even after working hard to receive those things, that the text says that Job was the greatest man among all the people of the East. <laughs> Understand that Job owned and had a lot of possessions. He even had servants. But also understand that as the story went on, that he must have been doing something right because when the houses burnt down and his children were killed, that there was a messenger that came and told Job what was going on. Now, now, I tend to believe that because he was respected by those in the area, that they came to inform Job out of respect. Because the truth of the matter is, if your house was burned down and your house and your children were dying and everything was going haywire in your house, but yet you were treating people the wrong way, I tend to believe they wouldn't come and tell you nothing. You would have to find it out on Facebook. You had to find it out on the news. But I don't know. I don't know. If you got respect in your community, if you got respect in your church, if folk really look up to you, might not do everything right, but they look up to you, I tend to believe that if they respect you, they're going to bring some news to you. But this man didn't care about what was going on because he worked to provide for the ones he took care of. Think about it. He had all these possessions. And when Job died because of culture and tradition, everything went to the oldest boy child. So he was leaving a legacy. He was leaving some stones for his child to have. He was living, living a lifestyle. And not only was he living a lifestyle, but he was also being a great man in the area that he lived in. 
People didn't mind smiling at him and, and speaking to him. People didn't mind talking to him because he knew that they, that Job was going to give him them an uplifting message. They didn't mind doing things for Job because Job was well respected. He treated folk the way he wanted to be treated. But we got to also look at this thing on the flip side. How many folk got a lot but actually don't have a lot of friends? You gotta be careful, you gotta be careful that when you got a lot of friends and you got a lot of stuff, that your friends are, might be your friends because they want your stuff. God says, Joe, I'm gonna let you be the steward over the stuff because I want you to be able to take care of your family and not have to let the system take care of it. If we allow our men to just stay in the bed all day and don't do what God has put them in this world to do, what type of world will we, be, will we be living in? We'll be living in the world that we have right now where you have 30% of the men staying home and 70% of the women in church are coming to church by themselves. We got a life to live as men. We got to make up and be the loving father that God has made us to be. So the first thing we got to understand is you got to live for God to keep his name good. But secondly, we got to work to provide for those in our care. Don't let your babies go hungry and you need oodles and noodles. You ought to be able to give your child that food. So the third thing, as I go to my seat, is the makeup of a loving father is the loving father will be a priest of the home. Okay, okay, okay. Verse 4 and 5 gives us this information that says, And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one of them, and sent and called for their, their sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so... When the days of their feasting were going about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered birth offerings according to the number of them. All for Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Text says, when the period of feasting had run its course, Job would send and have them purified. <laughs> Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking perhaps they had gone astray. They've done some things they had no business doing. Y'all, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like that. We, we, we looked at the definition earlier, and I want to show how one of these are important back then, but also in this day and time. You remember I told you that one of the definitions of a father was a priest. <laughs> that, that, that priest is one that would pray for the family. The priest is one that would lead the family in worship. The priest is the one that would actually be the praise and worship leader, would be the one that give them the word of God, would be the one that would burn offerings and be their pastor of the house, the priest of the house, if you will. Job actually stood in the gap for his children. Mm -hmm. And Job is believed to have lived during the days of the patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob which is a time before God gave his written law or even before God appointed priests as the religious leaders. And during Job's days, the father was the family religious leader. And because there were no priests to teach God's word, because there were no priests to teach God's law, the priests were not there to sacrifice the father was the one to carry it out. <laughs> How many men don't mind having Bible study in your home and leading the Bible study? Not your wife doing it, not the mother of the child doing it, but you doing it. How many men and fathers don't mind being the first one to break into the church and, and bring the family with you when, when some of them really want to stay home? I, I know football season is coming. I know basketball season is coming. Even with the pandemic right now, things are about to open up. But, 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 but my question is, when all things open back up, who's going to be first into the church? Job not only covered his children, but also understood that he was not perfect. So he had to not just cover his children, 
Watch this, y'all. But also cover himself. <laughs> Job burnt offerings out of conviction for his own downfalls and his own sins. I know the text says that he was a perfect, upright, and just man, but that does not mean that he did everything right. It just meant that he knew how to ask God for forgiveness for what he'd done wrong. And I don't know, I know I've got some men out there, some fathers out there, that you might be ashamed of what you've done in your past, but I'm here to let you know that when you give it over to God, and, and you stop worrying about it. When you give it over to God, and don't be don't worry about what folk gonna say. When you give it over to God and you keep your head up high, you ain't gotta worry about what folk gonna say. You can walk up in the church with the same one that called you low down. You can walk up in the church with the same one that told you you weren't going to mount to nothing. And you can remember that because God saved you, that you are now lifted up. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Good morning, I be healed. May the Lord God bless you real good. But do I have anybody that don't mind giving God? Some praise because your daddy might not be perfect, but he was a perfect daddy for you. Your daddy might not do everything right, but he was a right daddy for you. Your daddy didn't always tell you he loved you, but he didn't mind giving you a smile every now and again. Do I have anybody that don't mind waving your hand? And say, Lord, I thank you that my daddy wasn't perfect, but he was the right one for me. My father prayed for me. He had me on his mind. He took the time to pray for me. And I don't know about y'all, but there was nights when I was out boogie woogie. And there was nights when I was out having a good time. And I know it wasn't just mama praying for me, but my daddy was praying for me. He was looking out for my best interest. The makeup of a loving father is that you have a priest in the home. I don't know about y'all, but do I have anybody that don't mind giving God some praise? Because there's one more father that we have to give God for. The Bible lets us know that our father, which art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive not our debts and forgive those debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. I don't know about y'all, but the Bible says that our Father went through 40 generations, 42 generations in the body of a man. They hung him up high. They stretched him out wide. I said they hung him up high. They stretched him out wide. They hung him up high. They stretched him out wide. He hung his head and then he died. But then the Bible says that early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Do I have anybody that don't mind waving your hands and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Makeup of a loving father is one that uh, don't mind working. He lives for God to keep his name good. Make up of a loving father. Job tells us he works hard to provide for those in his care. And lastly, the makeup of a loving father will be the priest or the leader of his home. I ask you today, family, not just the fathers, but do you mind letting God be your father? Do you mind letting God be your shepherd? Do you mind letting God be your all in all? And I know that there might be some out there today that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. 
And if you don't know Christ, your Lord and say, you know you need to be saved. You know God needs to come into your life. That you type right in the comments right there. Say, I need to be saved. I need my life changed. I can't no longer do it the way I've been doing it. God, I, I, I need you to fix me. To pick me up. And turn me around. And place my feet on solid ground. If that's you, if that's you, go ahead and type in the comments. Go ahead and type in the comments. Let me know and I'll reach right out to you. Because God has something in store for you. But it's up to you to say yes. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what you have done today. The singing, scripture, prayers, and of course your word. Touch somebody's heart right now, God. That if they don't know Jesus and the pardon of their sin, that they would see them today. This is a reckless world, God. And the only way we're going to make it is with you. Help us, Lord, to understand your word. Touch that one, Lord, that is seeking you, God, but seemingly can't find you. You're in place. It's just that they're looking in all the wrong places. Help them, Lord, to give them, give them direction right now, God. We thank you all this morning for blessing seen and unseen. You're an awesome God, and you're worthy of all the praise. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, send us faultless before his Father, strong and exceeding joy. Rest, rule, and abide with us, hence now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. Again, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Go to God's. God bless you. Thank you for all that you're doing. Announcements are now going to come across the screen. We ask you to continue to love one another, but also love yourselves. God bless you. I love you.